Welcome back to Sport on 7. I'm Tom Bushell. Now, Kevin Peterson has been in Dubai this week, staying at the Atlantis and being unveiled as the Citizen Watchers Middle East ambassador. Having a well-earned holiday on his way to Australia for a second Ashes series of the year, the Englishman spoke to me about the Ashes, playing the IPL, and Jack Wiltshire, the English footballer who says that you should only play for England if you were born there, something the South African-born cricketer had an opinion on. Kevin, uh, welcome to Dubai, obviously uh, Ambassador now for Citizen. And uh, first of all, what does that mean to you and also how are you enjoying your time in Dubai? Um, it means a lot. I love Citizen. I've worked with Citizen for a few years now. Um, and to be asked to be the ambassador here in the Middle East is, uh, is special. Um, I love the Middle East. I love Dubai. We've toured here a lot. I've holidayed here a lot. Um, and it's just a great place to come and, uh, and relax. On your way down under, of course, another big test series coming up for the Ashes Part 2 this, this uh, year. Looking forward to it? Man, I wouldn't be going if I wasn't looking forward to it. Every Ashes series is huge. It, it defines your career. Um, I've been lucky enough to win four so far, and there's only a handful of us that have done so. And there'll only be a couple of us that, are, if uh, we win this one, we'll have won, uh, we'll have won five. So um, I'm buzzing. I know you've played cricket here before as well with the English, uh, England Test team as well. How do you enjoy playing cricket in, in Dubai and the, the UAE? A, a big passion for the sport here. Um, I enjoy playing one day cricket here. Uh, the Test cricket, uh, I mean, yeah, I averaged 12 in the Test series. I averaged 100 and something in one day. So uh, the one days were a lot more fruitful. But uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a beautiful place. Uh, the conditions, you get looked after really well. The stadiums are fantastic. Uh, and it's competitive cricket, so it's good. IPL again for you next year? Absolutely. And also, of course, is Jack still on the Christmas card list? Of course he is. He was just, it's just an opinion. It was just a discussion. It's not, as journalists like to call it, a Twitter spat or an argument or anything. It's just, it was just a discussion, and it's nice to have these discussions. Good to have Kevin here in Dubai. And, of course, uh, plenty of cricket action uh, coming up uh, this winter with the likes of South Africa, Pakistan, uh, all playing here in the UAE. Plenty more as well. Uh, now, with a roundup of all the biggest stories of the week, here's Chris McCarty. Yes, that's right. Chris McCarty uh, with me once again. And even though it is uh, October now, it is still a little bit warm out here, isn't it? But we'll crack on. Lots of sport to talk about. And let's start with the FIFA Under-17 World Cup. It all kicks off uh, within the next week or so. And it's going to be three weeks of terrific football in the UAE, isn't it? Well, at least we hope so, Tom. 24 nations heading here to the Emirates October 17th through to November 8th. And some of the biggest nations as well. We've got the likes of Argentina, Brazil as well, and, and UAE. Look out for the UAE. They've been very impressive in their warm-up matches. They've been in camp for three months, so really there is no excuse. They're coming in here very well prepared. A 1-1 draw with Argentina last week. They come into the opening game against Honduras up in Abu Dhabi on October 17th. And I fully expect UE to do well in this tournament. Their coaches said the semi-finals, and don't be surprised if they go all the way. Yeah, don't forget it is the Under-17 World Cup, so there'll be plenty of uh, young talent on show. And what's interesting about it is these players, uh, should they progress in their careers and do very well, will be the players playing at Qatar in, in 10 years time or so, weren't they, for the, for the proper World Cup? Yeah, of course, Tom, and we've seen some big names emerge from this tournament in the past, likes of Neymar, Ronaldinho, Francesco Totti. They've all played in the Under-17 World Cup, so it's a great platform for these starlets, the stars of tomorrow, if you will. And I guess the other added bonus of all of this is tickets are now free. Organisers announcing this past week that all tickets across the six host cities will, of course, be free, and it means get down there, look out for these stars, because as you rightly point out, in 2022, these are, at least some of them, will be playing there and could well be household names by then. Yeah, it really is going to be a fantastic festival of football here in the UAE. In Dubai, by the way, the group uh, of teams playing here, Argentina, Iran, uh, Canada and Austria as well. Interesting with Argentina as well. Diego Maradona, who now works and lives here uh, in the UAE, has been tipping the UAE to win, hasn't he? He has indeed. Tom, of course, is adopted country. He has lived here over the past three years and, of course, he is sports ambassador for Dubai. And he was at pains to point out that it won't be Argentina he'll be sporting in this tournament. It will, of course, be the UAE. One or two problems he's had over his years with the Argentine FA and he's uh, flying the flag for the UE which is great and I'm sure we'll be doing the same as well. Yes, uh, looking forward to the football here in the country. One man who will be picking up a trophy uh, in the next few weeks is, of course, Sebastian Vettel, the Formula One uh, world champion, three-time world champion, will become, uh, well, world champion for a fourth consecutive year uh, in the next few weeks. We, it looks like it will happen in India. We kind of hope it will be delayed and it might happen here in Abu Dhabi, but 90 points clear, only 100 to play for, it's all done, isn't it? 
well, it's been a procession from the word get-go, Tom. Nine races he's won this year, his last five. It's a career record for Sebastian Vettel as well, and it's only a matter of time. It's actually been quite a boring season in all. I think the, the genius work of Adrian Newey, the chief technical uh, designer at Red Bull, and it's coming to fore. And, and with Sebastian Vettel, he is one of the elite drivers. That I don't think that's in question. He is a three-time champion. He's soon going to be four, joining Fangio and Schumacher as the only four-time Formula One world champions in a row, of course. And it's just, it's been a procession from the word get going, and we just hope next year the likes of Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, that those teams, Ferrari, Mercedes, McLaren, can come back and give us a show next year. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned next year. Do you think things will be a little bit more competitive with the new engine rules and, and the, the new rules that are coming into place? Well, certainly so, and, and I think Mercedes are the ones that could benefit from this enough. Of course, the engine's going to that 1.6V uh, turbo engine, so look out for Mercedes to come good. But again, Adrian Newey, he's the man that everyone on the paddock wants. He's the genius behind the scenes, and with him at Red Bull, you expect Red Bull to kick on again, of course, and the, the, the replacing uh, Mark Webber, Sebastian Vettel, a four-time champion it's for the rest of the teams it's for them to all to do because they are the ones very much to catch yeah absolutely one man who is hoping that next year will be a lot different is Roger Federer of course uh, this week he's split with his coach of the last three years was that surprising or, or do you think it was coming I don't think it is a surprise Tom I think he has had a difficult year Roger Federer his worst since winning his first Grand Slam back in 2002 Knocked out as well early doors at the Shanghai Masters to Gael Monfils. He's had a number of shock defeats over the year. And Paul Anakin, it's been a fruitful relationship. 13 titles in all, of course, led him as well to Wimbledon in 2012, which was his 17th Grand Slam. But Roger Federer clearly feels at this stage of his career, he wants to take a new direction. And unfortunately, that's without Paul Anakin. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with uh, Roger. One man who is back on form, though, is Novak Djokovic, of course, just recently winning the Shanghai Masters. What was that, his 10th? Masters title, was it? Something like that? Yeah, and he's unbeaten in his last 20 matches in China. An interesting start about Novak Djokovic as well. Across Asia and Australia over the past three years, it's a 54-1 and record. His only defeat coming in Dubai, the Dubai Duty Free World Tennis Championships. Back 2012, his semi-final defeat to Andy Murray. He's the man in form. He's lost that one world number one spot. But since then, he's won the Beijing Open and he's now won in Shanghai. Quite incredible. Novak, the man to watch. And he's back here in Abu Dhabi as well at the end of the year. Yes, he is. Looking forward to the World Tennis Championships in Abu Dhabi, December 26th to the 28th. Uh, world's top four. Uh, uh, of course, uh, Djokovic, Nadal, number one. Uh, Murray and Ferrer all playing as well, plus Songa and Warinka as well. That will be uh, superb. We spoke to Pat Cash earlier on on the show all about that, of course. Uh, Chris Riccardi, thanks for your time today. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, see you again uh, very soon. Uh, more from Chris next time on Sport on 7. Thanks, Chris. Uh, now, thanks for watching Sport on 7 uh, this week. We will be back uh, very soon. Until then, though, I'm Tom Bushell. Goodbye.